Hello friends, I hope all of you are doing well. I started with series of videos. I'll be uploading it every week. This is all about Power Platforms. This is for the beginners. Uh, we'll be learning about Power Apps and Power Automate. So please subscribe to the channel to get updates of newly uploaded videos. Also in the description box below, you will find the links to various playlists. It's about Power App, Power Automate, SharePoint Online. Uh, so let's start with today's video. In this video, we are going to look at how we are going to save or update the record from form control in Power Apps. So we'll be making use of uh, two functions mainly submit form function and patch function. We'll also look at how the what are the differences between these two and how submit form function helps in validation uh, when you are using it with the form. Now let's just switch back to the Power App Studio. I have already created an app uh, with the basic stuff which is needed. If you want to know how I have created the screen, how I have added the form control, how I have bind it to a data source, you can refer the previous videos. In last video, we had seen how you can use form control, how to open it in different formats forms like new form, view form, edit form, how to bind it to a data source. We have already seen that you can refer to the previous videos. Here I have created a few basic screens. First is dashboard screen where you will see all the records from your SharePoint list. We are referring uh, this our test list which is tenants list from SharePoint site. So you'll see the tenants and then I've added another screen with just one control on it, on it which is form control, uh, which is bound to, to this tenants list. Now first let's see, let's just preview this. I'll just click on plus. It will navigate to the other screen. It will open the form in new mode. And when we click on the submit icon, we want to save this record in the backend. So we'll see what are the options to do that. So if I go to this icon and there is an on select property. So you will see all the properties here for that particular button or icon. So if I select the on select property, here is the window where you need to write the functions. So as I said before, we have uh, two options available. One is we can use submit form function, which is this submit form. If you open the brackets, you will see the input it is expecting is a form control, name of the form control. So this is our form control. The name is form one. So if you go back, you just have to provide form one, close the bracket, that's it. So what this will do is whatever you have entered in the form or all the fields, it will save it back to the data source or your list. So you might wonder how does this function know what is the data source and all that. So this data source is already bind here to your form control. So if you look at the data source property, it's tenants list. And if you go to view and data source, this is a list from SharePoint. Okay, so now let's just give it a try. I'll just add test one here. Let's just do some of the properties and six months progress let me see if i have some users here and okay should be fine contract it so i'll click on submit okay now we haven't configured any success message or even we haven't configured to redirect to any success screen. We'll see that in next video or in detail. This has been submitted successfully. Uh, if I go back to the list and refresh it, I should be able to see the test record which we just created. Test one, tower two, one zero two, six months contract. Okay. So what this did, this submit form function, it have created uh, the new record in your list. 
now this is uh, you have used it to create the new record because we had opened the form in new mode so if I show you this we clicked on this icon which is opening the form in new mode and we were navigating to form screen now let's say if you want to edit existing record so what you can do is for example this is your gallery control and in the gallery you have this row here you can just insert there are different ways either you provide the edit icon here in the gallery itself or you provide it on the view screen from where user can click on edit icon and open the same form in edit mode now let's just provide this tooltip here update this record and I'll just copy this as is and put it here on select property of this edit icon so instead of new form we want to open the form in edit mode so same edit form function form 1 we need the parameter the name of the form and again navigate to the uh, the other screen now we have to also bind which record you want to edit so for that you have to uh, let's give it a name selected tenant record this item this item will give you the current record which you are referring to in this particular gallery okay so this this item will get saved in this particular variable set is a function to set the vari uh, variable value to a global variable now if we go to the other screen where we have form control we'll go to the form we'll go to the item property here we have to make sure that we are binding that particular selected record to this form then only you will be able to see the record inside the form okay so what we have done here on the edit we are calling edit form function we are navigating to other screen you can change this order doesn't matter so let's do it this way let's just save the current selected item in particular variable selected tenant record then you open the form in edit mode then you navigate to the that screen so if i just preview it you can see the tooltip update this record okay the record which we are trying to update is let's say this one service tower 2 annually so if i click on edit it, it has taken me to the other screen it has opened the form in edit mode and it have bound that particular record to this form that so i can see the record in edit mode okay now you are let's say you want to update this record so let's say i just want to add rent here and alex was the agent i want from furniture let's say 2000 contract date i want to have so and so now I've made the changes and I'll hit the same button and no changes in the function it is still submit form we haven't changed anything there let's see what happens so I'll just go ahead and hit submit button and let me see okay it has already submitted as I said before we haven't configured any success message we are not able to identify whether this has been completed or not now let's just go back to the list we'll refer to this particular record and we'll see if it has been modified or not so if i scroll down or let me just refresh it and let's look for filter by here apply okay we have two records here the one which we just modified let me just see I will add more columns here we'll add rent and we will add modified and created column okay so this is the one which we just modified and you can see the rent also 50,000 so if you see here that's what we did we had modified we had added the rent here and it's here so this record has been modified so what we did is just that we are using still same function so 
So the same submit form function can be used for two different purposes. One is you can create a new record. So you have to make sure that you are opening the form in new mode. And second is you can use same function to update the existing record. So you have to make sure that you open the form in edit mode and you pass or you bind the existing record to the form control properly. So you go to form, go to item property, you bind it. So then this submit form function will understand, okay, this is an existing record. You just have to go and update it back. So we have seen submit form function for two different purposes: adding record, updating record. Now we'll, okay, one last point here with the submit form function. If, let me just go to the new form now and let's just make some of the fields as required fields. So if I go to required properties, so what you need to do is you have to select that particular data card for that particular field. For example, project, I want to make it required. So you have to first unlock the the data card in order to make the changes unlock to change the properties you have to unlock that then you have to go to go to required properties and make it true so what this will do is this will make sure that this field is marked as mandatory though in the back end if you go to the list setting this is an optional field but in the power apps for the user interface you see here the project is not required field it's optional field but here you can define or specify which fields you want to mark it as mandatory fields. So I want project to be mandatory. I want the rent to be mandatory. So I'll just go here, unlock it, go to required property and I'll make it true. So you can see the even the asterisk is getting added here. So if I zoom it a bit. So once it is required, it's, the asterisk is visible automatically. Now the submit the the benefit of using submit form function is it will run the validation rules automatically so you don't need to write the validation rules or conditions and check everything the submit form function itself will do it now if i just run this and click on submit it will show me okay these many fields are required and you have to fill in that so that's how the validation works automatically you don't have to write anything with the submit form function and if you fill in that, so let's say test two now, and tower four rent is 45. You see the error messages are gone and you can just hit the submit button. So this record will automatically get created. Okay. Now I'll just go back to the dashboard screen. We'll see uh, the other option. The second option is you can use the patch function. Now we've seen submit form function. We've seen the basic validation uh, stuff, which works automatically with submit form function. We'll see the patch function. Now you can use the patch function for, again, for both purposes. You can add a record or you can modify a record. You can uh, also modify a particular single column as well. So we'll see that in detail. Probably I'll upload another video. There are various usage uh, of patch function. You can have multiple forms on your screen, like form one, you have form two, form three, multiple forms. Um, you can have your own custom control, like let's say this is your form control. And after the form control, you just have, let's say a text box outside the form control. Okay. So you can push this value as well into your backend using patch function. So with the submit form function, you won't be able to do it. But with the patch function, you can do a lot of things. So I'll upload a separate video on it. But for now, so how you can use patch function is just go here, you submit button, write patch. You have to pro provide uh, parameters here. Source is tenants. That's my list. Record is which record you want to add or update. So if you want to add new record, you need to know it what you are doing. So if you are adding a record, you can write defaults and again provide the list name, which is your data source name. This should this should be your second parameter, which will specify okay, you are adding a new record. And then what you want to push back or what you want to add in your list. So you have to give form one dot updates. This way, 
this function will understand okay i want to update or add a new record in this data source with this much data so this is whatever data is there in the form it will push it back to the um, data source now this is for adding new record now if i write another function here same function to update existing record patch again same tenants now you want to you need to specify which record you want to update so you have to provide in curly braces id is equal to remember we had created a variable selected let me just add here the semicomma selected tenant record dot id let's say whatever record you select from the gallery you want to update that what what do you want to update you want to update form one dot again same updates okay so this one you can use when you are uh, adding a new record this one you can use when you are updating the existing record so this is how you can use batch function uh, this is again similar to submit form as i said but there are different other different scenarios where only patch can be used and submit form function can't be used so i hope uh, this was clear in this video and i'll come back with another video soon please subscribe to the channel to stay updated and let's just get back here yep that's what i wanted to cover in this video thank you so much for watching